Manchester City 6, Manchester United 3. What a performance. Two hat-tricks, one for Erling Haaland, one for Phil Foden. What impressed you most, Stevie Nicol, about City's performance today? Well, where do you start? <laughs> I mean, you know, let's be honest. The first half was men against boys. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm in my head, I'm kind of finding it hard to overly criticise United. I just think they ran into a juggernaut today. I mean, I don't think they dominated it because Manchester United weren't, weren't organised or or weren't up for the game. They just got totally outplayed. And quite frankly, on the form that City showed in the first half, I don't care who they were playing against, it probably would have been 4-0. As I said, the movement is incredible. The passing, the accuracy of their passing means that regardless of who the opposition is, you're not getting close to them. Everyone was in the perfect spot, at the perfect weight, in the perfect place to for the next move. I mean, Manchester City in that first half were absolutely, no question, just, just on a different planet to anybody else I've seen this season in any case. So you've called them unplayable. But how do you try and prevent them from causing as much damage as they did? Or is it simple? You can't regardless. Well, unless unless you make the goalkeeper kick the ball long, then it's going to be difficult. Because as I said, the passing and movement is so good that, you know, unless you're spot on all around the field, and I'm talking about the 10 outfielders, unless you're absolutely spot on, with your defend your defensive start, you know your decision making when when you go and close it down, you know where do you take the ball away? Do you take it away from the pressure or do you bring it inside? You know when Man City are in this sort of form, you have to be perfect. And as I said, if 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 you if you can't stop the ball from the goalkeeper, then you you're going to be in trouble unless you get it perfect. And well, not many teams have managed to do that. No. 1970 was the last time there was a Manchester City player scoring a hat-trick, Franny Lee, in a Manchester derby. Today we had two, Erling Haaland and Phil Foden. Foden was outstanding, as was mm. Erling Haaland, who also got a couple of assists. You've been in football for a long time, Stevie. Who's the closest you've seen to Erling Haaland? Or is he simply, finally, something very, very different that we've not seen uh, before? Absolutely. Absolutely. There have there has been all kinds of centre forwards, but there hasn't been one as big and strong as him with the sort of athleticism, with the touch, with the composure. I mean, he is he is absolutely unique. I can't think of anybody, uh, certainly the top strikers throughout the years, that that have the makeup of this guy. You know, they've all, they've all had something that he has, but I don't remember anybody having every single thing that he has at the same time. I mean, that's how good this guy is. Mm. Is he the final piece in Pep's jigsaw? Uh, I would have to say yes. I would have to say yes. You know, you talk about... The one thing we knew about City before Haaland is that they create chances. And the problem they had was when Aguero wasn't fit, they didn't really have a natural predator in the box. You get this guy who's whose stats tell you that so far he's he's about as good as anybody that's ever kicked a ball as far as being a predator in the penalty box. I mean, three hat tricks in the trot. At Seriously. home, it's frightening, isn't it? Seriously. I mean, if you get a hat trick in your career, you're absolutely <laughs> delighted. If you're absolutely brilliant, you probably get a few hat tricks. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you're Haaland, another 10 a penny so far. If this guy stays fit, well, I mean, it's, the record books are in, in big trouble. Erling Haaland, Stevie, has scored as many hat-tricks in the Premier League as Cristiano Ronaldo. He's played eight times. I mean, he's he's a freak of nature. He's very different from his father. And just like City, he's he's unstoppable. But there was a supporting cast. And they performed very well. Phil Foden was excellent. A word for Bernardo Silva. He'll not get mentioned in the aftermath of this. But I thought he was outstanding 
He's just doing what Bernardo Silva does, creating space for other. Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, I think the only negative from City today is the performance that they gave. They only won by three goals in the end. Isn't it funny? You just said the supporting cast and then reeled off those names. I mean, seriously, <laughs> supporting cast. I mean, I just tell it, it tells you how clear and how good Haaland is. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't forget the supporting cast, as you said. I mean, how, how great they are. I mean, De Bruyne's, De Bruyne's ball for Haaland's goal at the back post right, is, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't get any more perfect. It's ahead of the goalkeeper, it's in behind Varane. It's 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 sucking the goalie out because it's bending. It's going to him to begin with, and then it bends away from him. The pace of the pass, as I said, you know the the accuracy, the even even spotting the gap to play it. I mean, seriously, supporting cast Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, you don't <laughs> say that many times. Okay, Stevie, what about Manchester United? No positives from a, a thumping in a Manchester derby, but for Eric Ten Hag. He's going to grasp on to anything that he can to keep the players going because they could have chucked it at half time and ultimately they won the second half by three goals to two. However, what did you make of his team selection? Do you think he got it wrong or do you think he got it right naming an unchanged side? I'd, I'd have to say that I think the one thing in this game, you know, I guess I guess most people would say there are absolutely no positives to take from this. But if you're the, if you're ten high, then it's what you said. You know, you've scored three goals away from home against Man City. You know, you kept going. You didn't chuck the towel in. These are the only sort of positive things that Ten Hag will be able to say, because there really isn't anything else. But the truth of the matter is, for me, is I think he picked the wrong side. I think basically he. He misjudged the dominance that that the city will will certainly the pressure they'll put you under. And I think unlike other sides, Man City scored goals. You know, this team with Haaland in particular create, creates a lot of chances against everybody and anybody. But the one problem they had previously was they didn't have a finisher. And so when you know you're up against a Haaland, when you know you're going to be up against a team that are going to dominate you at home, then you have to think a little more defensively than he did. You know, he stuck with, particularly in the middle of the park, because that's where I think he got it wrong. He he has stuck through thick and thin uh, with Eriksen, with McTominay and Bruno Fernandes. Now, at home, you can do that in a big game because they did it against Arsenal and they won. They did it against Liverpool and they won. But what you need to look at is both of those games, they didn't have the ball. You know, they defended for their lives. And so at home, you can maybe get away with that. Away from home, at a place like City, you can't get away with that. You can't you can't turn around and say to Man City, right, I'll tell you what, come at us and we'll keep you out. Because that ain't happening. Nobody's, nobody's keeping them out particularly with Haaland. So, no question, he should have either played Fred or Casemiro. Now, you'd have to think you play Casemiro. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why are you spending all the money you are on, on a, a Brazilian international with, with experience, with with the, with the know-how, all of those things? Why are you not playing this guy in the middle of the park, away from home, when you know for a fact you're going to have to defend a lot? So, I think, I think that put them up against it straight away. But as I said... This city side, you, you could have you could have played ten Casemiro's to defend in front of De Gea, and they still wouldn't have stopped them. And from a United perspective, now they've got to try and pick themselves up. And I suppose it's it's tough straight after the event because you're still down. But you've got to look bigger picture. They've done all right this season. How do they ensure today was just a blip and they can get back to winning ways when they reappear in the Premier League next weekend, having played in Champions, uh, sorry, played in Europe in midweek. It's a real clear message for me, and, it, and it, it, it has to come from Ten Hag. And and as much as I said that, you know, the game was over, the fact is they didn't chuck in the towel. This this team, not that long ago, away from home against Brentford, threw the towel in. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I think you can't say that about what happened today. They got completely outplayed. They got completely dominated. They got completely smashed, whatever way you want to look at it. But the one thing they didn't do is chop the tail and they kept going right to the end. And and there's something to be said for that. It, that will certainly help everybody get over what happened in this game. When you lose six goals, it, it's a, it is a nightmare. But they clearly look as though they're behind the manager. They look as though they're together. Regardless of the scoreline, they kept going. And that's, from a United point of view, that is the one big thing you take from this. He didn't throw in the towel like he did against Brentford. And so at least there's something to build on. Let's end with City because they were absolutely outstanding today. Who can stop them win another title? Nobody. Simple as that. Doesn't need any more from Stevie Nicol. A thumping in the Manchester Derby. Manchester City 6, Manchester United 3. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.